Hello and welcome back to Patriot Contraptions. Today we are answering some questions about how to calculate your boat's waterline and we're also looking at Archimedes principle in the process and how both of these can be utilized to make your boat a lot faster. Now we're going to need an example boat today and I'm going to be drawing from a previous video's design, my how to build cardboard boat video to use this as an example. So therefore today's boat is going to be based around a rectangle. That rectangle is going to be seven and a half feet long and three feet wide. On either end of it, there's going to be a pointed nose and a pointed stern. These are going to each be two and a half feet long. Therefore, our overall length is 12 and a half feet. Now, in order to start calculating the water line, we need to first calculate the square footage of our boat. We have our design. It's very easy to calculate the square footage. In this case, all we have to do is, because we've got two right triangles, one on the front and one on the back, we'll just take the squares from the back of the boat, bring them up front, and they'll cancel out, which give us a very simple rectangle to use, and that is 10 feet by 3 feet, or 30 square feet when you calculate it out. So we know the square footage of our boat. Next off, we have to understand how to calculate waterline itself, which leads us into a cool thing known as Archimedes' principle. Now. In a nutshell, what Archimedes' principle says is when you take an object and you place it into a fluid, the weight of that object will be the same as the amount of the weight of the fluid that is moved aside in order for the object to float. So if you take a one pound boat, you place it into water, one pound of water will be shifted away from the size of that boat in order to make it float. So that being said, we can kind of get see where we're going. The first thing we need to know is how much weight is going to be in our boat, and the second thing is how much does one cubic foot of water weigh. So first off, how much weight is going to be in our boat? Well, for today's example, I've decided to have six people in our boat, and each one of those people is going to weigh 140 pounds. This brings our grand total up to 840 pounds of just people alone in our cardboard boat or our regular boat. This equation can be used for either. So, that being said, we also need to assume some kind of weight for the boat itself. Now, over the years, I've done some averaging and come out to right about 100 pounds for most boats of this size. So, we're going to use 100 pounds, which brings our total weight, when you add that to the 840, right up to 940 pounds of weight in this boat. Okay, we know how much weight's in the boat. Now, we need to know how much weight is one cubic foot of water. Well, if you do a quick search, you'll find out that one cubic foot of water weighs 62.43 pounds. Now, I'm going to knock that 0.43 off just to make life simple. So we're going to assume that one cubic foot of water weighs 62 pounds. Now that we know that, we can take that number and divide our 940 pounds by 62 pounds to get 15.16 pound cubic feet, excuse me. So we know that when our boat is resting on the surface of the water, we'll need to displace or move aside 15.16 cubic feet of water for our boat to float. This is fantastic, but now we need to get it into a water line on the side of the boat. So we know how many feet we need to displace. We also know the square footage of the bottom of our boat that will be sitting on that water to displace it. So in order to calculate the area, or excuse me, in order to calculate the water line on the side, what we do is we take that cubic feet, that 15.16, and we divide it by the square feet, 30 square feet in this case, to get our grand total of half a foot, or six inches if you divide it by 0 0.083, for our boat's water line. So if you have any questions on this, I did put the equation down in the, in the description of this video to make it very simple for you to use. So we know that our boat has a water line of six inches on the side of it. That being said, what if we want to improve this? What if we want to go faster through the water? Well, what this allows you to do is because we now know our boat is sitting six inches deep in water, in order to go faster, we might want to get that boat up out of the water a little bit. So let's say, hypothetically, we add two and a half feet to that central rectangle of our original boat. This brings the overall length out to 15 feet and its square footage, most importantly, up to 37 square feet on the bottom, 
which means that when we run it through our calculations, we find our new water line is 4.85 inches, a good inch less than our original water line, which means you're moving an inch less of water out of the way as you go forward, and that should allow you to get off to a faster start during your race. Well, we sure covered a lot today. We got our little science in there in Archimedes Principle, and we got our math in, and we learned something about how you can improve the speed of a cardboard boat. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did filming it. Thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Patriot Contraptions, hoping you have a fantastic day.